Welcome back to another video. Thanks for joining me on my channel again. Today we're going to be having a look at some, well, what I think is a strong meta build really from all of the last few videos that we've had on uh, battleships and what we've been testing. I think this is a pretty strong build. So I'll show you that in just a minute. But if you are liking the videos, please uh, subscribe, uh, hit the like button, uh, give me a comment, even if just to say thanks for the video just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you're a regular viewer, consider becoming a member or giving super chats. It helps to grow the channel. Gives me um, some motivation to keep making more videos. So today we're going to be looking at our, I've got a, a meta design, but I'm still testing it out. We'll see how it goes today. What I've done is I've added the Giga Cannon in as our X slot weapon. I've taken away the focused arc emitter. And so this is designed so that we can primarily focus on shields and knocking the enemy shields down. Plus it gives us a good amount of DPS as well. And I've decided to go for L-slot lasers. So that our lasers seem to be doing really, really well lately. And so instead of going for two medium slots, which those weapons tend to stay just out of range when it's a capital ship versus capital ship. So we're going to be using an L-slot to give us extra firepower. I'm running with just the one reactive armor hardening today and one shield hardener so that will reduce our shield hardening a little bit we're running with three shields and three armor just a 50 50 split and a line combat computer again so that we can close into range and use our uh, 80 range lasers here so that hopefully all of these weapons are firing uh like in our last battles we're pretty much just using x slot and a couple of lasers and standard stuff here now posing us straight up is our pretty powerful kinetic artillery battleship. We've got four lots of kinetic artillery. We do have the focused arc emitter to start off with because that's the design that was in the previous battles. Artillery combat computer, same mix of armor and shields. We are running with some shield capacitors this time because we've, we've tested out that the uh, afterburners don't really work in a situation where the enemy's got X slot weaponry and larger weaponry. Do you just kind of you just can't get away from the enemy and kite them in this situation. And also when you're using a X slot weapon yourself, you've got to turn and fire and it sort of makes kiting difficult. So you might as well go for the extra shield to make us a bit more tanky and survivable, hopefully. And we'll see how, uh, we'll see how this battle pans out. Mixing it up with a hostile fleet. They got a focused arc emitters, giga cannons are firing, the shield's going down. You can see they've lost a couple of battleships already because if the focused arc emitters just seem to be able to kill a few ships early. You can see their shields are going down quite quickly compared to this fleet. I've lost a couple of ships now. We're losing some firepower. The lasers now, they're all into it. They're really continuously firing basically these lasers, which now is whittling down this fleet. You can just see now their ship losses are increasing. The lasers, the guys just can't escape from the lasers. Let's just pause it here, look at the damage. I, what I think is so effective at the long range, are these L slot lasers, is they do have 80 range, they do have a quick fire rate, high accuracy, and it's just, con it's like continuous damage. You can see it here. It's just like continuously firing, and they're doing higher DPS because of that continuous fire rate. They just seem to be out DPS nearly anything else. This has got four kinetic batteries, so that's pretty good. And this has also got shields. It's an even split of shields and armor, so there's no advantage to either side in terms of trying to bust through shields and, and armor. This this guy's got the Giga Cannon. These guys got the kinetic artillery to deal with shields. So it's it's relatively even in that regard. If not a slight advantage to this guy having a uh, four kinetic artillery batteries per ship to knock down these shields, but even so, they're not able to do it. And we also got to remember that because they're trying to kite with the kinetic artillery, it, it's uh, you've got a uh, firing arc as well on the artillery, so they've still got to turn to fire. But let's have a look at the damage. So the large gamma laser, look at that, 50,000 up front, even higher than the focused arc emitter or the giga cannon. I want the gamma, gamma laser again, damage to armor is way up there, higher than the kinetic artillery. We're out, we're out damaging kinetic artillery damage to armor by about 40,000. And that's uh, due to the high laser efficiency. Even the shields, the Giga Cannon is well in front. Look at that. Nearly 200,000 damage to shields. Wow, that is very effective. I did not think it would be that effective to shields, considering these fleets have the same amount of shields, three each per ship. 
I thought the kinetic artillery would be more effective than that. And maybe that's because they've got to turn and kite and run away. That's an interesting tactic if you're facing an enemy that's using lots of kinetic artillery. They obviously want to stay at range of you using artillery combat computer. If you're using battleships which are line combat and closing range, it's going to force them to continually run, reducing their firepower. Let's see how this pans out. It's looking like a one-sided battle now. They're, the numbers are still not too far apart. You can see the firepower, though. Lots of ships have retreated. And it's just about over there, folks. Still just focusing the last battleships, and there we go. It's all over. So we've only lost seven battleships there. And the opposing fleet lost... Uh, what's that, about uh, 17? 17 battleships? They've gone into retreat at the moment. And we lost, yes, yeah, seven. So they lost ten more battleships than us. So the winning ship design... Our four lasers with a Giga Cannon, and that seemed to be very, very effective. Even though we've dropped one of our, um, our living reactive armors to add in an extra L slot laser, we still really, we didn't really take many losses. I think our damage output more than compensates for the loss of one uh, A slot because we're able to kill the enemy ships faster than they're able to dish out damage to us. So I think that's a good a compromise. That seems to be really, really effective at this stage. All right, let's uh, try another design, see if we can make it a bit more competitive. So for this fight, we've got our same uh, battleship fleet, no changes to the Giga Cannons and Lasers, all the same ship design. We've got our Tachyon Lance now in the artillery. So we've swapped out the focused arc emitter and we're going for a Tachyon Lance to see if that can give us a better result. Because some common commentators did note, um, because of the hardening, that the Focus Dark Emitter may be struggling to get through that. And that's uh, that's true. So now we're going for the Tachyon Lance to smash down that armor. So this should be a good combination, because you've got this to knock down the shields, and the artillery, and then you've got the Tachyon Lance to provide that big burst damage, which will smash the armor and hull of the opposing fleet and same armor shield set up in this now in terms of cost let's just have a look at the cost of these fleets so the tachyon lance fleet would cost uh just over fifty-eight thousand alloys this is the uh giga cannon laser fleet so you can see there it cost fifty-six thousand alloys so two thousand alloys cheaper so that's relatively uh the same cost two thousand alloys difference so just so the giga cannon fleet is slightly cheaper Let's see how this pa uh, battle pans out. Mixing it up with a hostile fleet. Go take a lance of the fire. Oof, look at that. Six battleships down straight away. Oh, that was a big opening salvo. I haven't seen one that big before. Even in my test, it was a bit better than that. So we might be at a big disadvantage straight away with the uh, laser fleet. That was a big hit. We'll see if they can recover or not. Might be, might be too big of an opening hit. See the firepower is sort of closing. The numbers are sort of closing up. Oh, yeah, it has closed up. That was a big hit they recover from. Oh, now they're going in front. Let's just pause. Let's have a look at the damage there. The damage to hull. Yeah, large. Gamma lasers are just doing a lot of damage there. Giga Cannon. Tachyon Lance. It was down. They must be struggling to get through the shields, really. Once again, the expected for Gamma Laser to be up there. And Tactical Lance is doing quite good as well. 200% efficient there. The Kinetic Artillery. The Giga Cannon again. So, and then the Kinetic Artillery. Not, not too far. Well, actually, he's actually about, what, 70,000 points, 80,000 points behind there. But overall, this fleet has just higher uh, weapons. Are doing Its weapons are just doing more damage higher up on that list continuously. Despite them losing six battleships in the opening seconds... They've still recovered to, looks like, a victory here. You see how quickly it's going. Yeah, that's a retreated fleet now. So, that's the 15, 15 left. So we lost, uh, we did lose more ships that time. So, we lost uh, 14 battleships. 
and they lost 21 all up so the numbers were a little bit closer in terms of ship losses but you can just see once again even with the, the tachyon lance um doing that burst damage at the start you just see how effective the tachyon lance is just bang right at the start six battleships dead just because that high spike damage uh even so the the giga cannon laser fleet recovered and was able to just overwhelm him once again with the continuous fire from the lasers is just brutal and with these guys knocking down shields it just makes a, a really good combination all right let's see if we can uh try something else and see if we can beat them with some of our other strong ship designs so for the next fight we've got our cloud lightning battleships that we've used effectively previously and we're going for line so this is going to be an all in close in brawl so we're going to see if the cloud lightning can get in close go through the shields and armor as much as possible uh, along with the focused arc emitter and do a lot of damage direct to the hull so we're going to bypass their armor and shields we, uh, this fleet is running uh, shield capacitors as well a mix of armor even mix of armor and shields and standard other components no changes to our uh, gamma uh, giga cannon and laser fleet we do have 25 percent hardening for armor and shields so that should help somewhat and we'll just see if the damage direct to the hull can outpace the damage the lasers are going to do to the uh, cloud lightning ships because the giga cannon will not be as effective because we'll be closing within uh, 45 range most likely let's see how this pans out Focus Archimedes killed only one battleship opening up. Now it's developed into a melee. We'll see who can out DPS who. Relatively even at the moment. See that hull damage going down though. Oof. Yeah, so you can see here, those even numbers, difference in the firepower, you can see the damage to the hull. It's like probably below 50% at the moment. These guys have still got shields and armor, and a hull is way up. So the hard lightning at close range is just doing a lot of damage. A lot of retreated ships here. That's a retreated fleet. You can see there the cloud lightning bypass weaponry was just too powerful. We just haven't got enough bypass weaponry in that test. So let's um uh, have a look at this and rejig it a little bit. And see if we can come up with a way which uh, would be better for brawling, which I think uh, we knew from a previous battle. So I'll uh, set that up for next fight. So for this fight, what we've got is our meta design with a few tweaks if you're going to be fighting at uh sort of a more brawling range you want to include a few auto cannons and instead of going with nanites i've just got a level three auto cannon to see how these perform so that shows a more generalized build that you don't have to go the nanite path and we've added in because we've gone two medium auto cannons we've added in an extra uh armor hardening to give us 25 percent like we had in our other videos and this should be a more close in brawling range type design, hopefully. And we'll see how that performs against the cloud lightning design. But the only uh, issue you can see here, the, the cloud lightning um, focused arc, does have a greater firing arc, 35 degrees, versus the Giga Cannon, which has 25 degrees. So there is a little bit of an advantage there in terms of uh, the X slot weaponry. So we'll see how this pans out compared to the last battle. Mixing it up with a hostile fleet. Couple ships there lost in the opening salvos. The laser fleet. Now that we're in melee range, can we see those auto cannons firing? Yes, you can. You can see them there, they're all firing see if that's how much damage that how much difference that's going to make the overall battle relatively close 
Cloud Lightning is a little bit in front in terms of fleet firepower, but not much. I'm actually dropping away a little bit, ship for ship at the moment. Let's just see how the battle's unfolding. Focused Archimedes are in front at the moment, damage to hull. Large Gamma Lasers are next, and Giga Cannons next. Large Gamma Lasers are damaged to armor, which of course would be expected, and a Giga Cannon was next. Focused Archimedes in third. Damage to shield, yeah, where Giga Cannon would be up there as the most efficient for that. Then the Auto Cannons are second, so they're doing a lot of damage to shields, which is great. The Focused Archimedes in third place. So, see here, it's relatively close. This is our Cloud Lightning Fleet. So they've got a couple more ships that have actually just dropped away in firepower. See, their shields have been completely stripped away this time. And their armor's almost gone as well. Uh, and their hull points are holding up a bit better in this battle because of the uh, extra hardening. Still relatively even. Although it looks like we've, uh, Cloud Lightning Fleet now is losing. Lasers are just getting on top. That hardening just makes that fleet just a bit, bit more survivable. And the auto cannons are great for that close in damage. That's the retreated fleet. All right, so let's look at the losses. So we lost exactly 10 battleships to this ship design. So the auto cannons and the extra hardening really uh, changed that uh, battle outcome. So if you're going to be brawling in closer range, if you think that's what type of battle you're going to be fighting and you're going to need to design something like this this is pretty powerful for your brawling type uh fleet engagements also great if you've got smaller ships corv corvettes and destroyers or even frigates trying to harass you these auto cannons will make quick work of them versus our cloud lightning fleet which still did very well surprisingly strong particularly once you get in the brawling range it's uh very very effective so if you're fighting <laughs> Someone using Cloud Lightning, you might want to stay at a longer range if possible. But yeah, overall, very, very effective. All right, let's move on to the next fight. Okay, so for this fight, what we've got is our trusty old carrier fleet. We're running with a focused arc emitter, double marauder missiles. We've got some flak there, which is not really useful. Two strike craft, two whirlwind missiles, a lot of long range firepower. We're now using carrier combat computer and try and stay at maximum range, hopefully. 50-50 splitters, shields, and armor, and we're going for three afterburners. We are going to try and keep our range as long as possible, trying to fire our missiles at this fleet, use attack on lancers, and give time for the strike craft to hopefully whittle this fleet away. But as we've seen, uh, it'll be hard to escape this fleet's lasers. We've got the Giga Cannon, and we have gone back to the original design, the four lasers, with the line combat computer, and the 50-50 mix of shields and armor with a... Uh, 25% armor hardening and 25% shield hardening. All right, let's see how this battle pans out. We're under attack. Time to dance. Only one battleship lost in that opening salvo then. With the Tachyon Lancer, they must have distributed their damage across more ships. See, they just can't escape the carriers at the moment. The lasers have still got that long range and they are firing. The Giga Cannon's whittling around the shields. You've already, you already, already lost quite a few. And this battle is looking pretty one-sided, actually. Yeah, they just can't escape those lasers. Look at that. Every ship's getting hit pretty much by lasers. Just a wide arc of fire. You can see the damage output here. Large gamma rays, a giga cannon, the tachyon lance is a distant third in this fight, probably because they're spending so much time actually trying to run. The strike craft are not doing much. Yeah, large lasers, huge damage, giga cannon next, then the strike craft are doing damage to the armor. So they're still trying to get through the armor to get to the shields. Giga cannon as expected, then the tachyon lance. Wow, look at that look at that. First spot is 223,000. And attack your lance is 29,000 in second spot. So Giga Cannon out damaging by 10 times uh, the attack your lance to get through the shield. So, which is to be expected, attack your lance is uh, yeah, not optimized for shields, it's optimized for armor. 
Whereas a Giga Cannon is optimized for shields, but still 10 times is a lot. Alright, so that was a very one-sided battle, that one. So you can see this fleet with the four lasers and the Giga Cannon was even more effective than our previous battleship designs at fighting these carrier fleets. So probably, ultimately, if... What it's looking like is I would have a mix. I would have a mix of um, battleship fleets, some like this, and then some like the previous design with uh, some auto cannons in it as well, so that you can you can even put say yeah a, a, a more healthier mix of auto cannons if you want more 50-50 split. But I found that design was pretty good our pre our previous battle against Cloud Lightning. So if you had multiple battleship fleets of those two designs, you're going to be able to fight long range kiting ships and you're going to better fight brawler ships as well. So those cruisers that come in closer, the smaller ships that come in closer, even if they've got torpedoes, yeah, you're going to take a lot of losses probably. You're going to dish out a fair bit of damage yourself, but you'd have your own screening ships as well to help deal with their screening ships. But it just means your battleships will be contributing to the fight, taking out enemy screening ships, which means you'll clear their screening ships faster and you're focusing on their capital ships, which will mean you'll most likely win the battle. Let's do one more fight, see if we can make our carriers a little bit more survivable and perhaps um, maybe uh, you know, do a bit more damage and represent themselves a bit a bit better in the next battle. So for this fight, I've changed the Tachyon Lance to a focused Archimeter because I just think that will work a better synergy with the missiles going through the shields, doing damage to the armor, and same with the whirlwind missiles and also the strike craft. I think it's just a bit of synergy for these designs. I've added in three... Uh, shield capacitors to make our fleets a bit more tanky it adds about 1500 shields each battleship to make it a bit more survival allow these guys to try and do more damage we'll see how that pans out against our same fleet of giga cannon and lasers uh, i expect them to win again but the fight will probably be a little bit more um not so one-sided let's say let's dive in The carriers actually lost a couple of battleships that time. These guys did not. The focused arc emitters. Lasers doing their work. Shields are holding up a little bit better. Lost one battleship now. Still looking a little bit one-sided though, isn't it? Let's just speed this up a little bit. They are holding out a bit better. They are losing some more ships. So let's just have a look at this now. It is closer than I expected. We, although we've got about 10 ship advantage now. You can see that the Gamma Razors are doing a lot of damage. Giga Cannon as well. Focused Arc and they've got Advanced Strike Craft. Giga Cannon, Large Lasers again. And that's just why we're winning. Because they're the top two damage and Strike Craft damage to armor. And same again. The top two as well. For damage to shields which you would expect but the gamma the gamma lasers are out damaging the focused dark emitters damage to shields and that's because of that well actually that's focused dark emitters shouldn't even be but that's because of the hardening but they're out damaging um yeah most other things so it's because we've got the damage in the top two uh classes of most of those areas there you can see this battle was closer so the focused arc emitters are doing better along with the extra shields to make the fleet a bit more uh, survivable. But still, it's just not, not a real contest, really. Putting the last ship now. There will be in a second. It's hiding up there. There we go, it's retreated. So that resulted in... 21 carriers being destroyed for the loss of nine laser battleships, basically. So another uh, strong result there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you probably an even stronger design, another variation of this, which is even stronger, which you could uh, you can use quite easily now with the the new the changes in the game. All right for this fight, I've designed a battleship fleet which includes a number of exotic type of weaponry 
that's generally the same design that we had of our four lasers it's got a ancient saturator artillery which is like an upgraded version of the giga cannon now this does 150 percent damage to shields rather than 50 percent from the giga cannon and also does 25 percent damage to hulls so you've got a few bonuses there it's the same fire rate same firing arc um same overall damage it's just got those bonuses there to the extra shield and hull damage which gives it some nice advantages and what i've decided to do here i've decided to run with some large ancient pulse armor to give us extra uh, shield hit points and we're also using the archaeotech ascension perk there so it gives us armor and shield hit points some more daily shield regen and then the large ancient suspension field which gives us shield hit points 750 percent and then plus 450 because we're using the archaeo engineers as well that's like 1200 a pop uh 1200 shields per uh deflector basically with uh more daily shield regen so we're getting about uh 16.2 daily shield regen with the two combined there and also gives us 15 percent shield hardening so we've got 45 percent there plus 25 percent which is giving us 70 percent shield hardening and then we've still got our 25 percent armor hardening on top of this now you do need the um uh what do you call it the relics or artifacts for this but there is a nice trick you can do now in the game if you build a uh, dyson swarm around a uh, star that has the uh, ancient artifacts so you had three or four there you can times that by three thousand percent and you get a uh, it's not not hard to get 60 70 um, artifacts per month from one star with one dyson swarm if you're able to find one of those systems so that can be really useful it works with other uh, resources as well whatever it would all tech if you've got that around your star and increases what have you got around your star by three thousand percent if you want to go a um, archaeotech build try and find some uh, stars that have that if even if you need to take them from your enemy try and do that so you got so you could be getting at least from one dyson uh swarm 60 to 70 relics per month which will give you a nice uh, amount to be able to continually build uh, these battleships that would basically be able to enable you to build one of these battleships uh every month in the game so that would keep you supplied and able to otherwise if you're fighting a crisis and stuff you're going to run out of resources to build these type of ships but i just want to do this so you can uh, see how this performs against a kinetic battery fleet which we used earlier focused arc emitter kinetic battery artillery combat computers 50 50 mix shields armor shield capacitors which we used previously let's see how much of a fight this is let's see if it's an absolute should be an absolute slaughter i think we're under attack time to dance that's two for now pink so we're three now i think initially they did lose six so that's probably extra hardening is helping there that is the their focused arc emitters now that the lasers are in play they should do a bit better but now they're starting to lose battleships they've lost uh, more, than I, more than i thought but now it's really closed up now the battle should swing in favor of this fleet significantly you can see the shields and armor is nearly spent they're doing they're doing better than i expected focused arc emitters getting through and doing actually doing damage to some some of the ships you can see here now now it's just a one-sided fight the lasers have just got well on top and it's retreated fleet you can see there the difference in uh damage they've lost uh what's that 23 battleships and we lost 10 overall so not a bad result so uh, their focused dark emitter battleship fleet did a bit better than i expected uh but yeah very very powerful design so you can you can always run with something like this if that's going to be uh your flavor so very powerful very powerful the kinetic giga cannon with a uh, combination with lasers and we've seen how we can look that a little bit to deal with more brawler type ships with the cloud lightning which is a very strong build as well uh for certain types of fighting so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video guys. And if you've got some comments and suggestions on what you would like to see, I know some people have been saying about the Giga Cannon. So this is the video pretty much all about the Giga Cannon and how it can contribute to a strong meta build. And really this is, this is pretty strong.
be a strong build like this even if the standard weaponry the standard uh ship design is very very powerful so uh with the standard giga cannon and standard lasers and level 5 armor and level 5 shields this standard technology is very very powerful if you're going this build you do need the dark matter reactor for enough power as well by the way so it is a bit of a, a real late game tech but just wanted to demonstrate it so hit the like button for me subscribe to the channel become a member if you really really want to um and give me some comments give me some feedback and i'll just say thank you that you enjoyed the video All right guys thanks for watching bye for now